eyes could bring you out of time. They sleep before the sign. Goodbye, the one by one philosophy of loss and faith. What's your favorite day? Wonder what they say. So recently I discovered this YouTube channel called Let's Talk Song and on a recent video they featured a band named Bloodbird. Now I'd never heard of this band before but I'd found the guy's analysis of other songs really interesting and I thought it wouldn't hurt to check it out. The song itself has kind of a grunge feel to it and indeed is even fairly open about its influences using the drum intro of Smells Like Teen Spirit at the beginning of its own song. Let's start off talking about the key of the song, as this was actually fairly interesting. In the analysis video, the guitarist mentioned that it was in B minor. However, the actual analysis itself spoke about the song as if it was in D major. Now that's not a problem because B minor is the equivalent minor to D, they have the same notes. But what I, and, and even with my cover, I've, it, I ended on that D chord. It felt like the natural ending point. But what was interesting the first time I listened to the song is I was hearing those G's at the start of each of the measure as the one chord. But I think this is something that the song kind of uses to its advantage. You see, let's pretend for a second that we are in G major. D would be what we call your five chord, yeah, using that Roman numeral numbering system. And the five chord has that note directly before your root note, so in this case F sharp, and that F sharp note is a semitone away from your G. Essentially the D major chord has the F sharp note, which is really really pulling you back to the G major. It's a classic like fundamental stor uh, storytelling, songwriting rule, and it's very very cool and I think really well utilised in this song. In fact, in the verse, the chord progression is slightly different using G, B minor, D and then B minor again. But I really, really felt when I played the song that going into the chorus, again, I wanted that sense of pull. And so I actually changed the end of each verse to just hammer out that D chord, really stay on that and drive you. You know, even though the B has that F sharp in there, I just felt like using the D really pulls you back to the G chord. Talking about the lyrics of the song, I don't think Bloodbird are a massively well-known band, and so I couldn't find the lyrics online, and indeed they're not in the description box of their official YouTube video. So I had to kind of listen to the song, and 
indeed two things. One, I don't think this song is a song where the lyrics are the most important thing. And two, clearly when singing, the singer wasn't overly concerned with the diction. And indeed there were certain passages that I just could not work out what the word was. So I kind of took what I could make out and then filled in the blanks. But again, considering what I've said, I don't think either the band or you, the listener, would mind. You know, I don't think it's sacrilege that I might have changed the odd word here and there. In regards to the meaning of the song, in the analysis video, the guitarist mentioned uh, once your favourite's dead is actually talking about uh, your favourite character in like a TV show or something like that, which was somewhat interesting, but kind of my way into the song, and especially looking at the verses, was this idea that our main character has undergone some kind of life-changing event which has caused a paradigm shift within him. The verses, again, this might be because the lyrics aren't overly important, but the verses had a lot of repeated words and repeated lines in them. Or, it's kind of like a repeated line but with certain words changed, especially a lot of the pronouns and like the tense, you know, like whether something had happened or it's going to happen. And so I found that interesting to play around with, you know, like in one verse, the character's in one state of mind and is doing one thing, but then in another verse, either the character himself or is being led by someone else to do something different. I think the song is a cool song. You know, it has that grunge feel, and like I said, it kind of does the Nirvana thing, where it takes a four chord loop, but then makes a riff out of it. Which I think is a real cool sort of songwriting device. And especially in rock music. I've really enjoyed making this video. It was fun not only kind of learning the song through this analysis, playing around with it myself, you know, thinking, oh, I could do a cover, and then deciding to do my own little breakdown, talking about how I've approached the cover and, you know, certain things that I might have done differently. As I develop more of an understanding of, of how music works, I'd really, really love to do more breakdown videos like this. I'm not claiming that I'd ever be as great as, say, you know, Rick Beato or Let's Talk Song, but you never know. I also have some songs of my own on my YouTube channel, which I would love it if you could check out. Obviously I'm biased, but I think they're really good songs, and I hope you agree. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out more of what I do. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and indeed I hope to see you in another video.